We can't have these silos anymore. We need to look at how we can most efficiently use energy across all of these systems. Welcome to Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. I'm Rachel Gregory. This week, we are joined by Robert Hornung, Ken Riaz, President and CEO. Robert, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Robert, in your opinion, what do you think the energy mix will look like in the next decade? We are under tremendous pressure to decarbonize our energy systems, and we're under tremendous pressure to reduce the use of fossil fuels going forward. So we expect to see increased use of electricity throughout the economy, decarbonized electricity, largely made from renewable sources. And we expect the electricity system will evolve and change significantly, moving from a, a one-way system today where we have large generating stations that transmit power to users to a two-way system where users are also generating electricity and we're moving it back and forth and we have technologies now like smart grid technologies distributed energy resources that enable us to have a, a future electricity system that is much more decarbonized decentralized and digitalized which will allow us to be much more efficient in our production transmission and use of energy going forward and can you tell us more about Kenria's 2050 vision? What are the key takeaways? Key takeaway is that if we're serious about meeting net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050, Canada will need to decarbonize its electricity system by 2035. It will need to expand its electricity production, probably doubling electricity production so that we can use that electricity to help reduce greenhouse gas emissions in transportation, buildings and industry. And we're going to rely very heavily on wind and solar energy as the key sources of that new electricity because they represent the lowest cost sources of decarbonized electricity available to Canada today. And they're widely dispersed and available throughout the country. What is your opinion on integrated energy? How important is collaboration between energy systems? Uh, it's increasingly important going forward. We've tended to think of the electricity system and the transportation system and the use of energy in buildings as all separate systems. And increasingly, we're going to find that they are interrelated, that we're using electricity in these other sectors. And we need to think about the system as a whole. We can't have these silos anymore. We need to look at how we can most efficiently use energy across all of these systems. And that relates to the production of energy, the use of energy, the transmission of energy. In all of these areas, we want to be as efficient as possible using the lowest cost and lowest carbon resources available to enable us to meet our energy needs. Since 2015, Canada saw the largest growth in solar in 2021. What are the projections of growth for renewables within the next decade? Can you tell us about some upcoming projects? You know, in our vision, our 2050 vision, we suggest that Canada is going to need to expand its wind and solar energy capacity tenfold over the next 30 years. And that's going to require us to have to accelerate our deployment of these technologies by eight times relative to what we've been doing in recent years. 2021 was a good year, a step forward. We installed a thousand megawatts of new wind and solar energy capacity. We anticipate installing 3,000 megawatts in 2022 and 2023, so we're moving in the right direction, but we need to be installing over 5,000 megawatts a year to achieve the level of deployment we need to meet our net zero targets, so there's still a lot of work to do. Let's talk about hydrogen. It's a hot topic in Canada right now, so why should people be paying attention? Can you tell us more about what's happening in green hydrogen? paying attention because it's going to also play an important role in helping us to meet our net zero greenhouse gas emission target. There are a number of areas where electricity is not going to be a cost effective alternative to the use of fossil fuels at this point in time, but hydrogen can play that role. And hydrogen can be produced from a number of different sources, including electricity, and we're seeing pilot projects emerging across the country in terms of hydrogen development. Uh, ultimately, we expect that green hydrogen produced from renewable electricity will be cost competitive with any other form of hydrogen by the early 2030s. And we actually expect that consumer and customer demand will favor green hydrogen going forward as people seek to reduce the overall life cycle greenhouse gas emissions impact of these different technologies. But there's opportunity for growth across the sector. Thank you, Robert, for joining us. It was great chatting with you today. 
Thank you for watching another week of Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. Be sure to like this video, share it out, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest videos. See you next week.